warning, if you're unaware, Pearl is the prequel to Ty West's porn-themed slasher X. So if you haven't seen that, there will be spoilers ahead because the character of Pearl is actually the antagonist of X. So just saying, if you haven't seen X, there will be slight spoilers ahead for X. I can't talk about one without the other. In short, though... Pearl fucking rocks. It, it is a, it's a masterpiece of storytelling. It's part Alfred Hitchcock Psycho. It's part Wizard of Oz. It is filled to the brim with crazy. I, I, I think I like Pearl even more than I liked X, which, like Pearl herself, is fucking nuts because I loved X. I mean, Naked Kid Cudi was in X. Yeah, it's that good. I, I've never seen a horror movie done in this style before, and I, and I think Mia Goth's influence in the writer's room and as a producer is monumental in making the, was monumental in making this film because you can tell how much care has gone into being true to the character and showing her in like not a positive light but you know just taking care about looking after the character in this um pearl follows surprise pearl as she fights to get out from under the oppressive regime of her family Her mother and father are German immigrants, and as it turns out, in 1918, there was some major worldwide event that meant that Germans weren't well-liked in the US. Hmm. I wonder what that could have been. Hmm. As Pearl spends her days working on the farm, caring for a quadriplegic father, and waiting for her husband to return from the war, she starts obsessing about becoming a movie star. And for, like as misfortune after misfortune piles up, she get, she basically goes cut the shit and decides to fight back. And fuck, she she fights for her dream in like the most extreme way. Um, I am almost certain I said this in my X review, but Mia Goth is a fucking star. This whole movie hinges on her being able to play Pearl slowly losing her grip on her mental health and she plays Bean flawed flawlessly she should have she should have gotten at least an Oscar nomination for this it's and once again horror gets snobbed as it always does but it, it's it's a very Joaquin Phoenix in Joker performance she does this sh- huge monologue that it just it just breaks your fucking heart even even after all the crimes she commits up until that point I, I couldn't help myself. I, I don't condone her actions, but in the context of the story, you get it. And I, I just wanted to give her a cuddle and help her fix things. Like, she's, she's that good in this. Also, Brad Pitt rule alert. It's the first one of the season. Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt. For those who don't know, I invoke the Brad Pitt rule every time some distractingly handsome bastard shows up in a horror film. Um, when... When people hit above a certain level of attractiveness, it defies sexuality and becomes art, as far as I'm aware. I've also, in the past, referred to this as the Momoa memo and the Cavill clause, um, but they mean the same thing. David Corrinsweet plays a projectionist in this, and he's the somewhat love interest of Pearl, and that motherfucker is breathtaking. He's, he's a handsome bastard. I when when he there's a bit in this where he tells Pearl that she could be in the pictures. I I couldn't help it. I was I was just there twirling twirling my hair. Oh, in the pictures. You're so funny. I I couldn't help it. He he's just got that early 1900s movie star charm, and he's a handsome he's a handsome motherfucker. So you know if you like looking at beautiful men, there's he's there's one in here. Um. It is it is so hard to make two good films. Especially when the follow-up is a prequel because you know what characters are going to make it out of out of it based on who's in X, right? Like we know Pearl is in X, therefore she doesn't die in this. That that can that's a huge problem for most horror films. Um cuz you know what the stakes are, you know like whatever happens in this you're like, "Well, well Pearl's in X, so she's going to be okay. That made me like X even more because I fell in love with the character of Pearl 
as I stated before, the colors used in this, are, they're really bright and happy from like the Technicolor era of movies. They sort of, they give you the safety you might get watching something from the era, like one of my favorites, Calamity Jane. And then it just, it fills the stories with these really dark moments of anger and rage to contrast that. As Pearl keeps having these moments of like sadness and rage and regret over and over and over, um, you just, it, it, things just get way more out of hand. She gets way more out of her depth. Um, and you just know that she, she keeps taking a step further and further towards the dark. She, she just she just wants to be a star, and, and you want that for her, but she's also in this supremely aware that she has these tendencies that she struggles to control, and it's it's just heart, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking for her as a person. Like, it's she's contextu- contextually shit upon repeatedly in this movie, and you want what's best for her, but yeah, you, you, once again, you don't condone it, but you get it. This also has the second most unhinged credit sequence I've seen behind A Wounded Fawn. So if you do watch this movie, stick around for the credits because it's, it, it's like this really long camera shot, one take, and it's fucking great. Who should watch this film? If you, if you, love watch, if you loved X, obviously, if you love movies like Psycho or Midsommar, this is in that vein... If you love the Technicolor era of films, Wizard of Oz, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, The Adventures of Robin Hood, anything from like the 1920s, 30s. If you find Scarecrow's weirdly arousing, you little freak, there's a scene in here that you're going to fucking love. Really uncomfortable for us who are not Scarecrow-philic. I don't recommend watching this if you want something really scary. This is not that scary. It's more like a drama with horror pieces in it, but it's good. If you, if you don't like dramatic horrors, or long conversational pieces. This might not be for you. If you didn't like X, or didn't care about any of the characters in X, once again, this is about those characters, so... If you didn't like X, you might not like Pearl, even though they are different in style. This 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 is the single best study of a horror character I've ever seen. It's unsettling, but it's not scary, and it doesn't have the gratuitous sex scenes that are present in X. In their defense, of course, there's going to be sex scenes in X because they're shooting a porno. So, But if you are averse to sex scenes and scares, you could definitely watch this film. This is a good one. You might be able to bring the horrorphobic into this film. You don't. I don't think you need to have seen... Because it's a prequel, I don't think you need to have seen X to have seen this either. Um, you might have to look away at a point or two. Um, but this is this is a drama piece. If you like dramas, this is... This is a really good drama. I love Pearl. I love Mia Goth. And I can't wait to see her reprise her role as Maxine in to end this trilogy. Ty West is an absolute maniac of a filmmaker. So if you like his stuff, this is, I think... Is it better than X? I, I think this might be his best. I think, it's, I think it is better than X. Um, yeah, that's it. As always... Let me know what you think if you have already watched Pearl. I know it's been out for a while, but I was sort of saving it for October. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all tomorrow for another review. Peace.